This is Talk Radio across the UK, online, on DAB+, and on the Talk Radio app. Evenings with Christo on Talk Radio. Evening. So many of you, many of those in the public eye, Piers Morgan being one of them, many others are now calling after the abuse of England players, which you and I have debated many times now here on Talk Radio. Many other presenters have spoken about it as well in the last 24 hours. The really awful abuse of those England players uh, after the uh, finals and everything that went wrong with them. Uh, many people are now saying, look, you shouldn't be able to have a social media account unless you can verify it somehow with formal identification, with a way in which you can use your driving license, your passport anything along those lines social media companies must start requiring users to verify their identity a director of policy at the started chartered institute for it the industry trade body this is dr bill mitchell said people should be asked to verify their identity in order to use such platforms apparently the it industry believes it could be implemented without compromising personal privacy but then, of course, the cynic in me thinks the idea of handing over more of my information over to a social media company. No, thank you very much indeed. Well, let's find out what Connor Tomlinson, Young Voices UK Policy Director at the British Conservative Alliance, has to say about this. And uh, he's joined by Paula London, an influencer and social media expert. Evening to you, Connor and Paula. Hi, Christophe. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us. So, Connor, I'll start with you. Um, obviously, social media, it's not a right. It's a privilege. Um, if you are a genuine person with genuine intentions, what's the problem with verifying your identity by a screenshot of your driving license or handing over your passport number? If you're going to be a decent person on there and you're going to go on as yourself, what's the problem? Well, first of all, I will push back on it not being a right, because unfortunately, the digital town square, it's become the way in which most of our discourses happen, especially with world leaders, for example. We've had uh, the meme of early 2020 was Trump was going to start a war via Twitter. So that's the scale we've gotten to now. And it would mean that essentially you'd have an ID uh, obstructing an, inf uh, an instrumental human right, which the state is not meant to take away from you. But then there's also the practical considerations. And as you said, it's reliant on a bit of human decency. Now, I'm sure many, many well-meaning people want all this abhorrent rhetoric essentially eliminated from the timeline. Um, there's, of course, the block and the mute function. It's very difficult to do that for a lot of people, I understand. But there's also the ability to censor certain words from either trending pages or your feed. So you do have the personal mechanisms to take care of this. Uh, Jack Dorsey spoke about that in his Joe Rogan interview with Tim Paul, which was very enlightening on the ideology of Silicon Valley at the moment. But the problem with censoring, uh, not censoring, the problem with linking ID to social media accounts means it creates the precedent for a permanent form of censorship by linking the information sector with the state. And essentially, if you have one form of censorship for racial abuse, for example, you can find these people, um, as it's already criminalized already under Section 127 of the Communications Act. So technically, there's already meant to be penalties against this sort of stuff. The efficacy of that is very much debated, of course. Um, the problem is when the levels of power change, you're going to get different reasons for people being taken off. And it's not just going to be one platform. You're going to have them deep unpersoned across all society. For example, like Mike said this morning, Mike Graham in his opening thing, he said he doesn't want these people to have bank accounts. He wants them excised from the country. Now, I understand that might be a bit facetious, but the problem is you can't strip people of fundamental human rights for either saying things that are abhorrent and not cause of violence but why, or just why, purely making a mistake. Why would you possibly want to be on social media, though, not as yourself? <laughs> if you don't have sinister reasons for doing so. I, I take what you're saying. I share actually some of your mm. concerns about the idea of handing over more data, more information to a social yeah. media company. But uh, I also have real concerns, and I know that you've acknowledged the block button and stuff, but we shouldn't need that. If you are joining a social media platform with absolutely, uh, uh, with, 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 with the idea of being completely anonymous, I can't understand why you'd need to do that unless you plan on doing it for sinister reasons. Whistleblowers. 
whistleblowers, Christo. People have to use anonymous social media channels to circumvent tyrannical government. And ironically, Piers Morgan calling from this, um, the fact that he refused to name some sources in the Levinson inquiry for safety concerns, that's journalistic practice, common, common and simple. But if you have, if you don't have these uh, social media channels that allow people to be somewhat anonymous, then you won't get people like Snowden, Manning, and Assange coming out and exposing things like right. the uh, uh, government. Let's see what Paula has to say about that. Paula London, influencer, social media expert. Uh, there's a lot for us to unpick there, but let's start with the simple ID side of things. I mean, it is the idea of us handing over information, government uh, mandated documents to social media companies and social media nowadays whether we love it or loathe it it's in our lives it's something that all of us need it's a is seen as a human right by many people why should the government have anything to do with that by having to give us id to go in there okay there's quite a few points to cover firstly i've had people pretend to be me online they haven't trolled people but they pretended to be me so instagram is the only platform i use and i hear that twitter and facebook generally has more trolling than Instagram. So I had to send my ID to Instagram about six months ago to confirm that my account was actually mine and I had no problems at all in doing that. And I kind of understand what your guest is saying, but not really. We're in the middle of a mental health crisis at the moment. A lot of young children are taking their lives. And if this can help prevent someone taking their life or someone feeling like they don't want to live anymore, they're having awful depression and obviously the waiting list are years and years long for children and adults to get mental health support why not do that you know there is an online harms bill at the moment but it's not enough it's not enough but, and what but, Katie but a lot of people done, will, i think it's amazing a lot of people will have the concern or will make the argument that great we have a mental health crisis which is obviously terrible but the the, the, the perfect solution to that would be to provide more resilience training to young people to give the mental health help to young people to encourage them to use as connor was discussing the block button and the like the solution isn't for you and i or people who are just genuinely wanting to use social media for for good reasons to have to hand over more information to these huge tech companies that frankly know enough about us already i mean you know i think i'm quite a strong person i don't get trolled per se but I do think some people use this term very loosely. Some people have huge egos online and they're used to people telling them they're the most beautifulest woman, they're this, they're that. And then they call someone a troll that says, I don't like your outfit. That's absolutely ridiculous. But what I strongly believe is that if I walk down the street and threaten to kill someone or call someone a racist name, I could be arrested by the police. So if I did that online, I should face the same consequences. There needs to be consequences for your actions. End of story. And I don't really understand too much what the gentleman was saying, because if you've got nothing to hide, so many companies have your ID, even to have electricity or have cable in my home. I need to tell them my date of birth. They need to know my ID. You know, if you have nothing to hide, I don't see the real problem. All right. Well, actually, Connor, I'm going to let you respond to that. We're going to take a quick break for the news headlines and then we'll come back and we'll explore exactly that point. If you need ID for electricity, for, for a mobile phone contract, why shouldn't you need it for using social media? We'll see what Connor has to say about that. Really interested to know what you've got to say about that as well. Really interesting debate. Zero three double four four double nine one thousand. We are, of course, talk radio. We're on your TV. We're on Apple TV, Rakuten, Roku, Samsung TV, YouTube, and of course, via Talk Radio. So would you be happy so that we all had a better social media experience to hand over your driving license? Maybe a couple of forms of ID regarding utility bills, maybe a passport some sort of government mandated id or something similar in order to be able to have a twitter account an instagram account i'd really like to know whether you'd be happy to do that so that everyone has a better experience or whether you worry that that's not only handing over more information to these companies but it's also sort of giving more of your power away the power to be anonymous as connor was saying who we're just talking to about this one of our guests that actually whistleblowers teachers nurses those people who like to go online and 
reveal, whistleblow some of the terrible things that they see in their line of work, they wouldn't be able to do that anymore. Some accounts that I followed, The Secret Barrister being one of them. There was a brilliant West End producer account that are, that are both anonymous that you wouldn't get amazing insights from. But, as Paula London, the influencer and social media expert, says, we have to hand over all sorts of information to be able to get gas, electricity. Mark has tweeted me this evening to say that, that I have to verify my f Twitter account through a text message sent to my mobile phone number already, Christo. I have a phone on mobile contract like a large majority of the country. How is this not traceable already? Well, Connor Tomlinson, Young Voices UK, Policy Director at the British Conservative Alliance, Paula London, influencer, social media expert. They still both join me. And uh, Connor, that's a very good point, isn't it? I mean, you have to hand over your ID for all sorts of things that we consider nowadays, in your words, to be a human right, the right to be able to heat our homes, the right to be able to, to have running water, the right that's to be able right to have... Stuff. Well, the heating your home is, no, that's, is, that's, is that's, a right, no, no, isn't that's, it? That is, there's, a difference between, there's a difference between rights and provisions, right? For example, you can't have a right that means you have to take something from someone else. Your rights are in, inalienable and innate to you. For example, speech, freedom of association. Mm. All right. Well, if that's how you feel about that, I mean, I'm not sure I completely That's how John Locke that. feels about it, and it works for America. But would you say that it's so unreasonable to have to hand over in the context of what I've just described, in the context of the things that you and I all take for granted, being able to go home and turn our heating on, being able to run the tap, being able to use a mobile phone, um, you, things you really can't function, whether you call it a human right or not, things you, you'd find it very difficult to function in life without, we use ID for those things. Yes. So there's one, the objection is for the government to mandate it, because that creates a pretty disturbing link between what the government can mandate the private companies doing, particularly what they can censor and what they can't. For example, um, I know Paul brought up the online harms bill. The problem with the online harms bill, there's no actual objective definition of harm in it. And so that means you can have a massive amount of mission creep as to what can and cannot be censored. For example, I know that we think all of the uh, uh, insults directed to Harvey Price, that K.E. Price raised, all abhorrent. Problem is, if you start redefining different words or uh, uh, different content as objectionable, then that means that you can continually censor things that the different parties, especially if the Labour Party or Conservative Party switch anytime soon, find objectionable. So that means we can essentially, I know that there's uh, uh, there's been quite a lot of uh, issues about the uh, teacher in the by-election place, which slipped my mind. Batley, you're talking saying, about the grammar school showing, that's the the, one. showing the Prophet Muhammad picture during the lesson. Yes. There was a lot. There was a lot on, particularly on talk radio, saying this is a blasphemy law by the back door. Well, yeah. what's to stop essentially a blasphemy law coming in directly because it offends? A I mean, that, that, that's a good I mean, point, isn't it, Paula? That we have a real debate going on at the moment and a real issue about the kind of language that some people might see as acceptable and some people. I get trolled all the time. I do this show all the time. If I dare say that I have sympathy towards one opinion, then I'm a woke lefty. If I say I have sympathy towards another opinion, then, you know, I'm I'm, I'm further right of Thatcher and, and, and various other figures. I get it constantly. And, you know, I could get offended by that, but many other people would say that it's free speech. We have this debate in this country at the moment where the language that some people, for some people that's water off a duck's back, to others is offensive. And wouldn't it set a really dangerous precedent that the definition of offensive being very very subjective and us finding it very difficult to actually work out what should be banned and what shouldn't and can i just make a point i mean some people aren't aware trolling actually means sending inflammatory messages to promote emotional online responses so that is a very very vague term you know some people are offended by minute things, but I think the point that we should be talking about is criminal behaviour. Threatening to kill someone, calling someone a racist name is completely different to saying, I don't like your dress. You know, these, if someone threatens to kill someone online, I cannot understand why Connor thinks they shouldn't be accountable for this. Oh, okay. Okay. Hang, hang on, hang on a minute. Don't and mischaracterize my position. That's, that's, already that's already illegal. That is already illegal. Let her finish, Connor, and then I'll let you come I back. Really so, understand so, what the problem is. Go on, Paula. We we missed that last bit, but you 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 think that that by not by not mandating ID, Connor's essentially saying, well, look, you can send all sorts of death threats and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, unless he trolls. To be honest with you, maybe I'm paying devil's advocate, but I haven't found one person online that disagrees with what I'm saying. They all agree the positives outweigh the negatives. 
let's be a bit kinder, let's people have consequences for their actions. Threatening to kill someone can bring on a heart attack or something. I mean, it can do untold damage. The racist slurs people are dealing with needs to stop. And if this is going to stop it, let's do it. All right, moaning Connor, about Connor what, what do you want to say things. to that? Okay, I'd like to say, first of all, I urge that for the sake of Christo's viewership, you keep your ad hominem attacks to a minimum and instead try and address my arguments. That would be pretty fantastic. Second of all, uh, yeah, threatens... Okay, let, let him finish, then I'll let you come back, okay. Paula. Yeah. Uh, secondly, uh, violent threats do not come under the rubric of free speech because they're calls to action. That's the old fire in a crowded theatre theater argument, and that's already illegal. Thirdly, it's actually uh, already illegal to send a racist threat over the internet under Section 127 of the Communications Act. Whether or not you disagree with that, it's already in law. So... People have but been prosecuted is, is for it this. the argument, though, here, Connor, though, that yeah. the, the, it would be a brilliant disincentive to do that kind of thing if you are doing so under your own name? It's really easy. Firstly, people because... already were. But, on but... The, on the, when, the, when the N word trended, for example, the other night, which is completely abhorrent, again, I can't believe I have to state this, but apparently I'm being mischaracterized as such, um, people with open names on their Twitter accounts were sending this. And the fact that you brought up, for example, child mental health epidemic, um, I don't think this is going to solve it at all for a couple of reasons. Personally, one, because this is a, a very deeply personal issue to me, because as a young kid growing up, I very much struggled with it, wasn't the same man I was now. Um, secondly, uh, with experiences of family members who work in the sector, the stories I hear all the time are that kids are bullying other kids non-anonymously, and that's why they keep being brought in for behavioural interventions. So having children on social media, one, that should be a thing that family places individually, because you don't want the government getting in between how a parent should raise their child, because again, it can set a lot of dangerous precedents as to what the child is being taught. And secondly, non-anonymising the accounts for kids won't stop it, because one, they're going to see them in the classroom every day, all day, and secondly, they're mostly doing it with their full names on display anyway. Okay, so that. what you're doing isn't effective, it's not principled. What isn't the real problem here, not those examples that you cited, which are as abhorrent as they are, people sending death threats and those sorts of things, because as Connor points out, they are already illegal. These are already things that should be properly policed, and I'll take your argument if you say that they're not being policed well enough. Isn't, isn't the... Isn't the issue here that potentially um, it's those grey areas, what one person might call hate speech, another person might call a fair opinion, and because of that, we might end up with all fair opinions being being removed from these kinds of platforms? Well, this is why I'm looking forward to September. You know, 611,000 people have signed this petition already. Obviously, over 100,000, it goes to Parliament. So if a law is brought in, there will be, you know, definite guidelines for what is criminal and what isn't, you know. And it's all well and good saying, oh, this is against the law. But if no one knows who the person is, it just makes no sense, but the, but does the, it? But the problem with that problem is I believe, you know, as a personal belief, I should be able to criticise, for instance, someone's religious belief. I believe that that's a belief. It's like a political belief. I should be able to say someone is absolutely crazy for believing in a kind of God. All right? Now, there are going to be oh, some horror. people who will listen to that and say, that is so offensive. That is hate speech towards my faith. Therefore, you, you should be banned from, from social media. And isn't it, uh, the number of guidelines isn't going to stop how offended people might get by something like that. Well, you know, saying to someone, I hope you die or I hope your son dies. I mean, come on. Yeah, but that we're not talking about that. Those are the really clear examples of... of yeah, but people of... are doing it all the time and getting away with that. I mean, Connor, what do you want to, to say to that? I mean, because it, fine, it might compromise some of us having opinions on, on various things that people might call hate speech, but if it stops these awful death threats and the kinds of things which aren't being policed properly, maybe it's a price worth paying. Well, I need to see some sort of statistic on whether or not the uh, the things are being policed properly, because I'm not going to take that as given, I'm afraid. Uh, what I am going to take, for example, is that the police are already logging non-crime hate incidents on a database. So these, this is not just being policed on what is explicitly illegal, it's being uh, policed as to what people are offended by and what falls within the rubric of not offen uh, not illegal speech, uh, speech rather, but offensive speech. So if you're saying it's not being policed well enough, you're going to need to provide some evidence from that because I'm seeing an overcorrection on our side. I'll give you the final well, word. Maybe you don't have don't, don't roll your eyes. The time about the death threats they get in the homeo homeo you, you, you said that you have never heard a principled so argument for my position. Like I wouldn't let, 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 let her speak, Connor. Here. Connor, you've had a That's lot fair. of time to speak. Let, let Paula finish. Yeah, I care a lot about people's mental health and physical health. You know, health. I answer everyone's DMs. A lot of people are going, a lot of my followers are gay. A lot of people have disabilities. A lot of them have mental and physical disabilities. And I'm always there to support people. So I see what they're going through on an everyday basis. You don't know 
Connor. You don't have people message you telling you that they're depressed because people are making fun of them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. People are telling them they're too fat, they're too thin. You know, I have empathy. I care about people, so I go through it. So I want something, a bill, to come in to help stop this. You know, if someone calls someone fat, they don't need to be arrested. It's not the end of the world. You need to grow a bit of a thicker skin sometimes. But some of the stuff people are being made to feel awful just because they're gay and things like that. This is disgusting. It I mean, needs to it's, stop. Connor, I mean, again, you know, you, 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 whatever, wherever you stand on this mm. it is true. We've got to finish in a minute because we're running over time. But I, I just want to get this across that, that wherever you stand on this, it is pretty much a given that social media can be a really toxic and horrible place yeah. sometimes you acknowledge that you know people do send for the fun of it homophobic sexist well, people are bloody awful abuse awful <sighs> what what would be your solution then if it isn't some sort of id so people do it under their own name what solution would you put forward instead well i was going to say earlier so firstly make uh, voluntary verification a much easier system like you said if people are impersonating you then voluntary verification should be a much easier system to do okay uh, uh, rather than it being a current status simple badge, which is unfortunately used very heavily by the influencer class, perhaps as a stake. Um, second of all, making so the, the, the filtration systems are a lot better. Um, sorry, what was that? I'm an influencer by default. I'm also a broadcaster and I have a degree, no, so you're not the only smart person in the room. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, haven't, I haven't personally attacked you once. You Please keep this. So you've you. you sat there and accused me of being completely unempathetic. You've made a lot of presuppositions yeah. about my personal life experience as well, saying that these people well, of, of you know, uh, The only difficult. person I would think that wouldn't want to stop trolls is a troll, but you know, you told me you're not a troll and I believe you. No, the point, the point is, I understand that you have incredibly compassionate standpoints and I don't like people being upset either, but the problem is you can't set an objective criteria of what should and shouldn't be policed. It's impossible. And you also can't offload it to someone else who is in a lever of power, because that lever of power changes. And so therefore, the Overton window of what is acceptable and what is not acceptable changes. And unfortunately, one day you may be on the wrong side of that. And I wouldn't want to see that either. I agree to disagree. Okay, yeah. Paula, I think that that's a good point to end it. Really appreciate the two of you taking the time. Passionate debate about these things, and that's the only way it's going to end up getting solved. Connor Tomlinson, Young Voices UK Policy Director, and Paula London, Influencer and Social Media Expert. Lots for us to dissect from that. We'll get through loads of your calls that are coming in on this. Coming up next, right here on Talk Radio. Online, on DAB, and on the Talk Radio app. Talk.